today we're painting in one of my books. This is Christie's Cutting Garden, the winter version. And using Holbein, use what you have though, friends, don't worry. And I'm using these three brushes from my brush collection. Let's get into it. How cute is this page? So I'm starting with my half inch dagger and just a lot of water on my brush and a little bit of brown. And yes, admittedly, I do have some blue in my brush. My brush wasn't perfectly clean. And I'm using the curved edge of the brush facing downward on the page to pick up the color. And adding in really soft tones right now. And this is kind of a girly fox, so I'm giving her kind of rosy cheeks, but I'm moving quickly and I'm moving in a way that keeps the page wet or at least very damp throughout the process. And the, the reason I'm using this particular brush, uh, now if you don't have this brush, just use like a number six round, a, a little bit of a larger round brush because you're gonna get that versatility. You're gonna be able to make big strokes quickly like that on the ears and then smaller strokes quickly um, with the tip of your brush. So I love this brush or a larger round for that exact reason. So here's the thing with my watercoloring books. I'll tell you a little story. They were the first on the market years ago. My first series, Painterly Days, was published in 2016. It was at a time when coloring for adults was a big thing and folks were getting super, 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 super detailed in their coloring, like crazy detailed. And I wanted my books to be a breath of fresh air. So I really encourage folks, I mean, obviously paint the way you wanna paint in these books, but I love one or two layers, get in, get done, find your joy and get on with life and come back the next day feeling refreshed to try another page. So that is what I'm doing today. This is going to be one layer. So I am going pretty wildly into my palette, grabbing variety of blues and greens, browns, whatever it is as I work and laying them down almost simultaneously. And so what do I mean by that? Like right here, I'm adding a darker pink, but I'm very quickly smudging in some lighter pink, some purples, and I'm kind of doing the mixing on the page. And so it's a very freeing process and really a great way to approach these books when you don't have a lot of time to paint. So if you're curious about mixing on the palette versus mixing on the page, watch this video. It's a good one. It ruffled a ton of feathers, but in a good way, I think. Continuing on, and here's a tip for you. Keep a decent amount of water on your brush when you're doing this kind of loosey-goosey mixing on the page type of style. And notice I'm going back and forth, adding probably in a 10 second time period, three or four different greens at this point. But that's the beauty of it. And you'll see me too kind of scooping up on the page with my finger. And that's when I go outside the lines and I want to push the color back. If you scoop a dry, clean finger in the direction of of the space that you want the paint to stay within, you're going to be able to remove those quote little mistakes really quickly. So you see me doing that a lot, that's why. Because I am moving quickly, I am moving instinctively, but what comes with that is a little bit of a messier journey. And so you are gonna go outside the lines, but I would rather go outside the lines a little bit, scoop that paint back where it belongs and move on, than be so nervous about doing this all perfectly and so tedious about everything that it causes me stress. Now, if you love getting tedious, friends, hear me, stay tedious. Do what makes you happy, do what gives you the joy. But I just like to be here as a constant reminder that there is a different way. All right, moving on friends. Now, obviously this is not real time, I'm moving quickly, but the basic idea is wet on dry that very quickly becomes wet on wet. I'm using those two techniques almost exclusively through this whole thing. And if you're like, wait, wh what's wet on wet, wet on dry? I call it wowed and you can check out this video to learn more. It's time for the liner brush and I'm adding some really fine details to the veins of the leaves. I'm basically expanding on the illustration that was there to begin with, with some really beautiful linear details here and there. Just grabbing my favorite greens and using some really lyrical strokes, very moderate pressure on this brush to get a really thin, wispy line. And it's just giving that little extra oomph of detail in some areas. I'm a big believer in not doing all of the detail in all of the places in your painting. It keeps things interesting. So you'll notice that I'm not going to be doing these veins in the leaves everywhere. But again, if you love extra maximalism, more is more, 
go in. If that's giving you the meditative vibe that you're after, then by all means. If you're having a good time, friends, I'd love for a boop on this video, which is a like. It just lets everybody know that they need to join the party. I love the wooden frame on this illustration. So I am taking kind of an indigo, pretty heavily loaded on this brush and adding some woodwork type wood grain details. And they're pretty strong. You could go in and just get increasingly dark with browns and layer up the brown intensity. But I just figured I'd go right in with a blue. Now into the background, I am loading up my brush really heavily, lots of pigment and a good amount of water. And I'm going in and creating a dark moody background. Now I'm bringing in just clean water and spreading that heavily laid color down out to the edges. And I'm using my number two round brush from the brush collection. And this is a way that I love to do backgrounds. If you're like, oh, Christy, I love this technique and you wanna see more, watch this video. It is a live stream, but super fun um, deep dive into backgrounds. So I'm just gonna continue this technique. Lots of blue on my brush, lay down a little bit of it, not Notch it out in areas and then spread it out with clean water on your brush and just keep going. And this is a great time to kind of define areas that you really love. So for example, I really love those sprays of greens down here in the bottom right corner. So I'm making the blue really, really dark where the leaves kind of converge and then letting it blend out as we go away from the leaves towards the tip of the leaves. And so this is a way to really make everything punch, really make everything pop, punch. What I mean by that? I don't know. I mean, I guess, yeah, your, your art could punch. It's a good thing. Anyway, um, I love backgrounds like these. I, I don't do them all the time. It's not like a signature necessarily, but man, are they fun. Now I will say this, you've got to move kind of quickly. You want to keep what's called a wet edge. And that's basically where you keep the active edge of your paint constantly damp so that it doesn't dry to a hard line that you then can't get rid of and it just looks like a big interruption in your painting. So keep moving quickly, keep that water moving around so that you never have to worry about a hard edge that dries stubbornly. And I, isn't this just gorgeous? I think I'm gonna add some like white stars, like little dots, not really stars, cause it's a small space. I just feel like the color palette needs a little bit of a Christy bump, which means fluorescent. So this is a great way for you to understand. Here's the thing about fluorescence. It doesn't have to mean that you're like, ah, adding fluorescence to my painting. What? You're saying what, Christy? No, adding fluorescence in a soft, sheer way can just give a little oomph, oomph, zing, zing, where things are otherwise starting to look a little muddy. So try it. Okay, a little bit of gesso on my round brush and then dab, dab, dab into that blue background. I'm not trying to make perfect circles here. These are actually really textural. Some of my dots are more textural and thick and some are like more textury and thin. So you just get in there, dab, dab and get out. And before you know it, you're gonna have what looks like kind of like a snowy sky or a sparkly sky. Oh, I just love it. Now I am taking a little bit of that white gesso on my liner brush, mix it up so it's almost like a thin maple syrup consistency. And you're gonna be able to use that for linear details in your leaves. I'm not going overboard again with the white at this point, but just enough for everything to start to sparkle. Fast forward, look at that sparkle. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Okay, adding in some final details. I'm seeing some areas where there's just some white of the page shining through, blendy blend. The thing I love about these books even though this isn't 100% cotton watercolor, traditional watercolor paper, still very high cotton content and it takes a beating. So you can go in once things have dried and with a clean water and a light touch and blend out any weirdo drying areas. You know, watercolor does weirdo things that sometimes you wanna erase or smooth over. Um, and so you're gonna be able to do that. You're gonna be able to do that in here. Isn't it fun? Like, I love the thought that some of you might be painting along with me right now, that we're kind of like sitting next to each other and just like bumping elbows and hanging out. I love it, I love it. So if you're painting with me right now, I see you, I see you, you've got this. Isn't this so fun? So fun, take a breath. Yeah, take a breath, friends, because you did it. And this beauty is, she's gorgeous. So happy painting. But if you've enjoyed this, I want you to go like binge this playlist. Yeah, I'm sorry. Tell your family that I send my, my apologies, but you need to watch this playlist next.